Uh, my talk today is going to be on the role of a radical prostatectomy in patients with oligometastatic prostate cancer, uh, which is a quite uh, intriguing topic, I think. Uh, the, um, as you know, a radical prostatectomy has uh, a long history, is a well-established technique. This is a paper from Dr. Leper uh, showing that in the long term, uh, it can control the disease very well, but uh, of course, this is only if you uh, select well your patient with, local, with localized disease. Um, on the other hand, we really, the guidelines, they really don't say anything about any role of uh, uh, radical treatment for of metastatic, for metastatic cancer, uh, because for this disease, this stage of the disease, uh, the, the, the gold standard has been for a long time um, uh, uh, androgen uh, therapy, anti-androgen therapy, um, and there is no uh, in that in that in that specific um, for that specific uh, therapy we don't have any level one uh, suggesting that one is better than the other. You can use you know orchidectomy probably is not used anymore much. Uh, you can uh, use um, um, a medical therapy, uh, but uh, in some in some center they adopt an intermittent. Um, schedule uh, of ADT, uh, my offer some benefits, you know, these are all topics that are, um, we can discuss about, but and recent, more recently also a role for uh, early chemotherapy in these patients has been uh, demonstrated. Uh, but today we are not talking uh, uh, specifically about metastatic prostate cancer, but on, um, on, a, on a different stage uh, we can say that, uh, which is oligometastatic cancer. This is a concept that is kind of new to us. As, as urologists, uh, has been introduced many years ago, actually, by medical oncologists for other um, uh, type of cancers, and uh, basically the idea that you can that you can have a different um, biologic behavior of the cancer. Uh, if on uh, one side you can have a, a cancer that uh, is uh, prone, is uh, uh, tends to uh, metastasize um, uh, uh, very rapidly and very um, actively. Um, in, in, the, in, the, in the rest of the body. Uh, on the other side, you might have another type of uh, cancer that does not metastasize as, uh, as, uh, as easily. And that's because of you, maybe there are good primary tumor conditions and also because they, the cells that tend to metastasize, they don't find a good host where to, they can uh, settle uh, down and develop a metastasis. Uh, metastasis. Th uh, therefore, uh, there might be a paradig uh, uh, paradigm shift on what we think is the continuum of prostate cancer. Uh, so instead of having localized, local advanced, and metastatic, there might be another intermediate stage, which is oligometastatic. And uh, so the question, of course, in, in, uh, from a treatment standpoint comes, uh, do we have a chance for cure for these, pa these patients in, in this uh, stage of the, uh, of the disease? Now, one problem is that um, if you look at the literature, there is no standardization of the definition of these patients. Certainly, uh, probably we all agree that the, you know, the word uh, of oligometastatic means is a low volume disease. But uh, and there are, if you, uh, there are uh, the studies that talk about this, uh, they um, probably are, they include patients up to five uh, metastatic sites. But again, there is no consensus. There is no um, specific de definition, and that is also because. Um, how you define how many metastases you have uh, on a patient with prostate cancer highly depend on the imaging technique used. We were uh, in the old times, and in, uh, until a few years ago, we were just uh, using uh, CAT scan and bone scan. It was easy, uh, but it was, um, again, suboptimal. So we couldn't see all the small metastatic side that the patient might have as presentation, and therefore we could basically treat the patient we might or, uh, which, who might already have a metastasis uh, with a local treatment. And now, uh, over the past few years, and uh, we are basically living a sort of a revolution of uh, really entering a new era in the, um, in the modalities of, uh, that we have available. And uh, the, these old modalities, they have, uh, some of them actually are not avail are available, for example, in Europe and not the US or, or vice versa. And, uh, but uh, there is a, a learning curve we are, uh, uh, we are now uh, uh, phasing, uh, and this is a couple of examples here. For example, this is a, a patient uh, which uh, on bone scan might, seems to have only one metastatic site on the rib here, but if you do then a, a PSMA a, a scan, it, it shows a different picture. So a completely different picture uh, that, that, that changes completely the way you approach this patient. This is another um, technology 
we currently use at our hospital, uh, the oximine or uh, flu cyclovin PET CT. Again, and we mostly use these for uh, patients who have biochemical recurrence after radical treatment. And in, uh, these allow you to see, uh, for example, a single lymph node metastatic site. You can eventually uh, try to think about doing a salvage lymphadenectomy on this patient. And, um, but again, it's not uh, optimal because, of course, when we discuss all these cases and uh, we, are, we are trying to learn what these images mean in a multi multidisciplinary uh, meetings, and uh, sometimes there are false positives, sometimes there are findings that we cannot explain. So it's kind of we are, are trying still to learn how these um, can help us in uh, direct our um, uh, treatment. Most of the literature on oligometastatic prostate cancer has been uh, from rad radiation therapy. Uh, papers. So, uh, you know, some of the, uh, uh, several groups uh, uh, described a few uh, small series, case series, uh, where they treated uh, patients with low volume with a few metastatic sites. Again, as you see, there are a different definition from less than three, less than four, less than five, or one, uh, with, a, uh, with radiation, with a good local control, uh, not, uh, they didn't really control the, you know, the survival of the can cancer-specific survival, but certainly with a lot of control of the disease. Um, and um, this is, the, I want to mention this because this is the re most recent, uh, probably the best of these studies on uh, what is called, what they define as metastasis-directed therapy. Uh, this is a multicenter randomized phase two uh, study. Uh, the, the patients uh, were basically patients who had a biochemical recurrence after a primary, uh, a primary treatment for prostate cancer. Uh, they only included patients who had three or, or fewer um, uh, metastatic lesions um, seen on choline, PET CT. Uh, again, as you see, they, don't, they didn't use a bone, just a bone scan, but a more advanced imaging technique. Um, and they then randomized the patient to um, either uh, uh, surveillance, so not do, don't do anything for these lesions, or trying to um, do surgery or, or radiation for these lesions. The primary endpoint was how long they were able to keep the patients free from using uh, ADT, and uh, 62 patients were enrolled, uh, median follow-up time was three years, and uh, the uh, ADT-free survival was 30 months for the surveillance group and 20, 20, one, uh, one months for, uh, for the uh, treatment group, and therefore there was an advantage, uh, um, but uh, this uh, didn't really uh, show to be significant on the, um, because probably also of the small size of the, of the, um, of the sample. Uh, but at the patient, they didn't see any uh, uh, significant toxicity, probably because they use a, a low dose of radiation. Uh, but uh, um, certainly, the, 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 not, the, the conclusion of this study was they, they noticed a, a, an advantage in, in, in the ADT free survival for these patients. Um, and therefore, they kind of suggest to, that this should be something to, to be further investigated. Uh, now, in terms of coming to the, to the subject of, of the lecture is the radical prostatectomy. Radical prostatectomy, uh, I want to just start off by saying there is no level one evidence, of course. The guidelines, they don't even mention it. Again, the standard therapy is systemic therapy. Uh, and so the data we have available are really mostly from uh, population-based studies or non-randomized studies, retrospective courts, uh, you know, so all the uh, uh, inherent biases of these type of studies. Uh, there are some evidence from uh, for example, from uh, these uh, some large, uh, large uh, population-based data, uh, the SEER data, the SCALP, who published a, a series in 2014 in European Urology, over 8,000 patients. They basically look at treatment, those who were treated with either uh, a prostatectomy or brachy and received no local treatment, and they saw a better uh, overall survival, cancer-specific survival at five years. Also another study from Fossati, um, and again, same uh, data set, basically, uh, and the uh, same uh, similar finding. Basically, the, the patient who received radiation or, or, or radical prostatectomy were, uh, uh, were, uh, did better in terms of survival uh, uh, versus those who did not. Uh, also, uh, the, the Munich Cancer Registry, uh, which is a well-known registry in Europe uh, for, prostate, for prostate cancer, and they also saw, by just looking at 500 patients with metastatic prostate cancer, uh, they saw that radical prostatectomy Prostatectomy, uh, doing a radical prostatectomy in this patient had uh, resulted in a better um, uh, survival uh, at five years. And now let's look at few uh, single center study. Again, you will see very low no, low number of cases. These are all kind of feasibility phase one or proof of concept, uh, whatever you want to call it. Studies. Um, this is the from Germany uh, where the 
uh, basically included 23 patients with a biopsy prion prostate cancer. Uh, the cutoff for to define low volume disease was three lesions, um, and also the excluded uh, patient with the visceral or uh, extensive lymph node metastasis. Um, the control group was another group of patients which were who were treated with uh, just hormonal therapy without any local therapy. And uh, the, the finding of this study were that uh, radiation, uh, radical prostatectomy patient had a better, uh, longer median time to castration resistance, 40 to 29 months, uh, better clinical progression free survival, better cancer specific survival, um, um, and therefore, uh, you know, positive finding from based on this analysis. Uh, the largest studies uh, in this uh, field is the one from. Uh, um, from this group of uh, investigators from uh, Sweden, uh, Italy, uh, Germany, and also I think there's Mayo Clinic involved in here. They basically uh, pulled up the, their cases done on this patient over, uh, again, small number, if you look at number, it's 100 cases, not very high. Uh, and um, uh, these are the, num the, the you know, what they found basically from, uh, as you can see, it's interesting to see that most of the cases were done with an open approach uh, the operative time was comparable with the standard uh, radical prostatectomy for for uh, um, for a, just a localized disease. Length of stay is, is this, dif you know, that depends also on the country, of course. Uh, and complications were uh, were uh, pretty high in some cases. And the, the actually in the, the authors of, of the, they explain this by saying that uh, they are mostly related to the fact that this patient had really extensive lymphadenectomy. Uh, which is not done on a daily basis for a localized disease. Um, and uh, other things that we can look at is, for example, the, the positive margin rate, 54%, uh, uh, but again, these are, uh, is basically locally advanced disease. And um, the continence also is not as great as uh, we uh, wish uh, uh, for, you know, for patients who are undergoing radical prostatectomy for localized disease. Um, there is also another more recently uh, prospective study prospect where patients were prospectively enrolled in, the, in this uh, uh, 42 patient. Again, this is a study for another uh, center in Germany, Martini Clinic, which is very high volume, uh, very uh, well-known center for, for treatment of prostate cancer. They treated, uh, they included in this, in this case 43 patients, um, and they compared those to four, uh, same number of patients receiving systemic therapy. Again, the inclusion criteria here was uh, less than three, up to three bone metastases no visceral metastasis, and uh, they only, they did it only if they the deemed that they, they think that the, they thought the tumor was resectable, so, um, and the PSA cutoff also for this was 150. Um, so the patient undergoing uh, radical prostatectomy were younger, uh, lower PSA level, lo lower uh, clinical stage, uh, fewer bone metastasis, so better, uh, there was some selection bias there. Uh, they didn't find any significant benefit of radical prostatectomy on, ta on time to castration resistance or overall survival. And the short, the, there was also a short follow-up in the radical prostatectomy arm. So this is probably not a, 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 a so uh, positive finding. Another group from Korea, they just focused on robotic prostatectomy for these patients. Uh, 79 patients, um, this is Yonsei uh, from Seoul. Uh, they treated with radical, robotic assisted radical prostatectomy or uh, just uh, systemic therapy, and uh, they define here the cutoff is five lesions, not three, uh, detecting on bone scan, just a regular bone scan. So this might have been, for example, different if we, they had used another, you know, more advanced imaging technique. Um, and uh, they look at, you know, all the outcomes, surgical outcomes, also cancer-specific outcomes. And basically, they found that uh, those who, were, uh, who underwent radical prostatectomy had less uh, uh, requirement for uh, treatment, surgical treatment of urinary symptoms. Um, and also they did well, better in terms of uh, uh, contr tr control of the cancer. However, if you look at the uh, tables of the, where they describe the, um, you know, in more uh, specific number, then you realize that um, adjuvant therapy was used for 73% of the patient, and they also, 40% of them, they had the salv uh, salvage radiation therapy. So, and, uh, so it's kind of difficult to also to interpret this data and what, if the role of uh, how, you know, how, far the, how far was the impact, how uh, big, how large was the impact of surgery on the outcome of this patient. Uh, because it's a, such a intriguing and also unclear uh, field, there are several ongoing trials. This is just some of them. Uh, you might have heard of the trombone trial in the UK. 
uh, and uh, there is also another one at Andy Anderson at the Martini Clinic, so uh, all centers that, uh, uh, th all these, there are some, uh, some of them, basically they are all trying to, uh, to uh, answer the question whether or not a radical treatment offered to this patient might uh, be better. Uh, each study uses a different, different endpoints. There are some, uh, there might be some discussion on which endpoints to use there. Um, and therefore, we'll see if any of these studies will give us more answer uh, than what we have today. And, and I wanna uh, also show you this slide, Dr. Klein, which, which is more, much more expert than me in prostate cancer treatment, uh, was commending an, one of these review on, on prostate oligometastatic, uh, of, on oligometastatic prostate cancer, saying that probably if, of course, it's very attractive, the idea of being able, being able to offer this patient a chance for cure. On the other end, we don't have to confuse the ability to treat the patient with the, uh, with the actual benefit of, of doing so. And therefore, uh, it, uh, from what he says, he doesn't really believe that is, that is, um, we probably can, uh, can, can treat, say, can, uh, this can have any meaning, meaning, meaningful impact on, on the disease progression. And probably the, the real key, the real future is gonna be more in precision medicine. Uh, probably the real revolution would be in, in kind of understanding the genomic um, events that drive prostate cancer progression and therefore to development of targeted therapies for these patients. So not really in, in, the, in, the, radi in the surgery or, or radiation uh, treatment. Um, uh, and therefore, as a take home message, I would like to say that uh, uh, feasible radical prostatectomy in this patient, yes, it, fe it is feasible, probably carries some higher uh, risk of uh, surgical complication and uh, also some uh, risk of higher and uh, of uh, uh, not as good as, uh, uh, as we've seen in, lo in locally, uh, local, uh, local, pay, local, localized disease uh, in terms of uh, functional outcomes. Um, however, it might prevent urinary complication from prostate cancer. If you remove the prostate, they might not need any TURP or any placement of, uh, of a suprapubic catheter, uh, but I don't know if that's enough to justify a, a radical surgery. Uh, the oncological benefits is completely uh, not uh, defined. It's unclear, uh, as I, sh I showed you several biases that you can look at when you see these the results of these studies. And therefore, if you consider uh, uh, caring, uh, tr trying to do this type of surgery, you should probably do it within the framework of a trial uh, that you can think of opening at your institution. And this was my last uh, slide. Thank you. <laughs>